Welcome in live to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Today we are giving you this week's picks. Last week was a little bit of a bloodbath for the boys. Uh, this was our first real bad week. We were on a little bit of a heater and some tough losses. Clemson stinks. Who's the other team? Iowa State. Too Iowa many, State. too many favorites. Iowa State Just outgained. hammered on favorites. They outgained them by two hundred yards and couldn't cover six and a half. This I was disgusted by it. We couldn't. Was, we under <laughs> we we underestimate how bad Brock Purdy is, and he's pretty yeah, bad. Dude, they were moving the ball. They just didn't score on the red zone. Like field goals aren't going to win you Big Twelve games, and then they gave up a kick return. This is hard. That's play. like that's like on Brock Purdy. If they're not putting the ball in the end zone, yeah, that's yeah. his fault, or at least yeah. a, in large part. Yeah, but they, it was just hard to like because they dominated that game and just could not cover six. But that's how it works. That's how it goes sometimes. We did it a decent, a decent little Notre Dame money line, which was kind of saved the week a little bit. We we've, we've been cashed on those plus two hundred money lines, so we're sniffing them. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's get into to our locks of the week or picks of the week. I don't know if all mine are locks, but I do like some 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 picks. I'm going to start off with – I'm going to go UVA. UVA it's tomorrow night, Thursday night, UVA money line at plus 180 against Miami. This UVA team's good. Uh, the offense is going to put up points. I watched them against Wake Forest, and Wake Forest is a strong defense that likes to turn you over. And UVA moved the ball on us pretty good. I say us because I'm a Wake Forest fan. But uh, besides, like, two turnover on downs – uh, UVA would have been right up in there with Wake Forest. Uh, Wake, Wake ended up taking uh, – pulling away at the end, but UVA looked good most of the game. So I like UVA plus 180 against the Miami team that just seems to be just fractured at the core. Like they, they're they a little rattled. Derek King's banged up. I don't even know if he'll play. So I like that pick. What do you think about that? I, I'm, I'm kind of with that. I think they are a very weak team. My I think Miami is like – far worse than people think because I, I i don't know I, I i'm not like wildly impressed by michigan state that they are gonna be a team that scores a lot so the fact that miami was given up a lot of points to that team is very concerning and and the, there's just some like yeah if dear king isn't going to be 100 percent, and it sounds like yeah, at least at best he's going to be like playing a little hobbled and yeah, yeah i'm just like yeah, if, if, if he can't be really good and doesn't feel comfortable running, like, well, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. And I think Virginia, their defense isn't great. They didn't look great um, as a defense, but that offense can put up points. They go fast, they put up points. Brendan Armstrong is very, very accurate on time with the ball, and he's very tough. He, he'll get those yards uh, in the run game if he needs to. Uh, Miami historically just an undisciplined team so plus 180 I think it's worth a flyer especially if you're looking just for a little Thursday night action since the uh, Thursday night NFL game sucks uh, UVA money line take them six and a half too I like the money line more because I think if they cover six and a half I think they're gonna win uh, so I, I kind of yeah I, I like the money line there too just by the nature of And I just so I if it's a close game, UVA is gonna win it. Um, yeah, okay. Miami's not a team that wins close games. They're they're low. I want to move on to to a, there's two picks I like Friday night. Uh, my brother and I, but we've been talking about this pick the whole week. Iowa goes on the road to Maryland, and, and this is a Maryland team that I really like. Um, Talia Targavilla, Ta, Talia. I'm gonna see. I, I I get butchered by his name every time. Um, uh, Talia's look good. He, he's uh, he's looked really solid. The biggest thing you saw on his film last week or last year, I should say, was turnovers. And he's pretty much um, gotten rid of those pre- pretty, pretty much. Um, that being said, I would have liked this game if, it, if Maryland's a, a seven and a half or maybe 10 point underdog. I don't like them only being a three point underdog. I think Iowa can I'm, I'm, I feel good about Iowa covering three points. Yeah, I think I was in uh, – I think they're going to be a much tougher defense than anything uh, Maryland's seen. And, and Maryland's put some points up, but yeah. I don't get the sense Talia 
thrives under pressure. And, and I do think I was, I was going to be able to put some pressure on them and they play a defense that, that does uh, get after quarterbacks a little bit and make it, make it hard. Uh, and they're not going to give them big plays. So I, I think that it, it will be Tali is a, like, he will make mistakes. He will take long sacks that kill drives. I think that's his kind of Achilles heel right now. So. And that's not what I was going to they're not going to give him big plays. They're not going to let him run for like 40 yards, kind of like those things that he, he kind of uses and that offense uses to march the ball. Uh, and I think they'll, they'll bait him into some mistakes. I do like what I was going to probably be able to do against Maryland. Yeah. And this is, this isn't like, I, I don't like Iowa. I think they're not even close to being a top five team. If you look at their wins, they, they got a, they shot up the ranks after blowing out an Indiana team that turns out to be pr- pretty poor team. Then they shoot up the ranks again, going on the road to beat Iowa State all the way up to top four team in the country. Iowa State turns out to not be as good as we thought they were. And then they kind of played a not a very good Colorado. They played Colorado State and they did not look very good last week. Um, they took care of Kent State pretty good at home. So I'm not like I don't love this Iowa team, but I also like almost even like two and a half, three point spread. It moved from five and a half to three. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll take Iowa all day long. Yeah. Once on the road. It's not like at the end of the day, I think, I think their physicality is going to be top for Maryland. That's not a, I mean, they're still kind of re- bringing themselves into kind of the big town, I'd say in terms of recruiting the guys who can physically match up and, you know Iowa can like yeah they're not gonna be a fast explosive team but they they are good up front they're big they're physical and and um yeah I just I think Maryland's maybe a couple of years off from being a team that should be kind of a pick them against in Iowa that's tough because I like this Maryland team too like it kind of hurts my soul to take them uh especially the way Tali is playing. They have some really good edge defenders. Uh, and then I love these two receivers, Dante Demas and uh, Rakeem Jarrett. I think they balance each other out. Dante Demas is more that pro NFL style, very good contested catch, big body, um, can get separation. Rakeem Jarrett's a little bit smaller, put him in the slot, get the ball in space to him, and he's elite. I like what they have. Um, they can't run the ball very well. That's That's been a problem. But uh, – I don't know. Iowa three points. My, I'm taking them. My issue is, is Iowa's so good at, at forcing mistakes. I think they're they're taking the yeah. ball away from. I mean, they they really they killed Indiana and, and Iowa State by creating turnovers, putting pressure on the quarterback, and picks, fumbles, and that's. And I will also say, like when you watch that Maryland team play West Virginia, they didn't. They're really not a particularly good defense in my mind. Like, I don't think West Virginia is a great offense. And Letty Brown kind of had his way with that team. And if it wasn't for Daigie, who I, I mean, God, he's, he, he let us down a little bit in that game. But uh, he's, he's a mistake guy. That's not how Iowa plays. So he, they're not going to give him uh, the mistakes that Daigie gave him. And, yep. I, yeah, I just – I like what – I just I think it's a decent matchup. I th- I just think it's too close. I'm and with one, you. One I, do, I don't love the game, but it's too close. One I other thing I was better. One other thing I want to know before we move on. Uh, Maryland showed a lot of problems run stopping the run against a super physical Illinois offensive line and running back. They had jo- that Josh McCray, true freshman, and he was just kind of shedding guys off and kind of just bullying them around. And that that posed some problems for Maryland. Uh, guess what? I was oh, even yeah. better at it. They got even better back with an even better offensive line. And so that's going to be a problem. You're going to kind of cut the amount of time that Talia is going to be on the field. If Talia throws in some mistakes, he's not going to see the ball that much. So uh, Friday night, I think I was going to be kind of locked in again. Kirk Ferentz normally does not drop games. He's not supposed to drop. Uh, his problem is just kind of not beating the top team. So I like this game. Yeah. Um, I, th- I do – but uh, I know I've been kind of dominating the show, but I do want to put one more Friday night pick BYU minus eight and a half. I don't like this Utah state team very much. We won some money on them against that Colorado state or North Dakota state team uh, or North Dakota, not North Dakota state. I'm sorry, North Dakota, but this Utah state team is, is not that good. Uh, they went and played Boise state and got, got crushed. Uh, the lines eight and a half. 
BYU is a better better team than Boise State by a pretty good margin, and eight and a half. It's I think BYU is going to put up forty on them, at least thirty, and I don't see Utah State kind of scoring much more than that. So, uh, yeah, Boise State's like legit, real in my mind, like very very good. Uh, yeah, especially on offense. I think that I think Tanner BYU. Hall. Like, you talking about BYU? Yeah, BYU with Tanner Hall, like. Massive fan of him, and I think he's like kind of underrated just because people don't talk about him. Like, I mean, he he really runs the ball well, and he 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 gives me Johnny Manziel vibes with a slightly better arm, personally. Like, I think they have very similar styles. I think they're not like wildly fast, but they're crafty runners, good enough athletes at the college level to be really productive there and the only thing I didn't like that he did against uh Arizona State I mean I did watch that whole game and he had the one kind of like freak out play where he just threw the ball into the air and, and it was picked he used to get tackled and he threw it but aside from that I mean he's really pretty solid I, I don't see a ton of holes in this game and he he will be able to march the ball I think on Utah State yeah um they played they played uh, South Florida BYU last year, and um, Jaron Hall was a little banged up, and so they sat him out. I think he he would, from what I'm reading, he'll be back. I think they they thought he'd be back for that South Florida game, but I'm guessing it's like okay, the South Florida game's not that great. Um, South Florida's bad, yeah. Let's make sure let's make sure we're right for uh, for uh, Utah State. So i think he'll be uh, certainly that is something to monitor though because if he doesn't play yeah if that changes then that changes my opinion for sure yeah i mean it i don't know if it changes my opinion that much because i think the the talent around uh at this byu team is is very good too and baylor romney didn't look that bad against south florida he only threw five incompletions threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns so he he honestly was not, not bad. bad um it's not a good south florida team but yeah, South Florida is pretty bad, but uh, I still like eight and a half. Um, yeah, I mean, on principle, like those aren't those aren't my the games I love, just because I think once you start picking much outside of a touchdown favorite, I think you lose a little bit of control over the, yep. the flow of the game, and yep, especially with a BYU team that like they're not wildly explosive on offense, like they can score, but they're not. They don't really have big play wideouts. They're more bigger physical. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't want to call them exactly possession guys, but that's kind of more how I see them. Like they don't have a home run hitter, and, and I don't think their running backs are that either. So that that that's the only thing that concerns me on an eight and a half point spread when you got a team. Like I was comfortable when UCLA play in Hawaii because I knew that team plays wildly fast and has some explosive players. Uh. BYU, you get to me. It's getting in a little bit of a like. They're not. They're a little bit more of a move the ball, a little more methodical, and so that's the only thing that concerns me on an eight and a half point spread on Utah State. Granted, like Utah State's bad, so I don't. I don't dislike the pick, but it's it's not like in my wheelhouse. So yeah, one thing I want to add, I guess, and I, you make a good point. I don't like taking taking lines that are much over a touchdown either. You notice we like to stick to the money lines a lot. This the over under sixty two. Like the, there's going to be points, uh, and and so I think that, that, that points that stretch that stretches that that eight and a half. So it means a little less. But yeah, okay. Um, let's move on. Uh, Dill, what, what are your picks for Saturday? I would say favorite pick is UCLA to cover three on Arizona State. Uh, not a not a huge fan of of what Arizona State does. I think they would really benefit from having a like some offensive skill on the wide receiver. Yeah, that place, is place especially yeah. like. Yeah, because I'm with you. I I love uh Jaden Daniels, but he gets no help. They drop a ton of balls, and they don't ever make any plays for him. So, I think playing a UCLA defense that is going to get after him is going to put some, and I don't see uh, them giving up like a ton of rushing yards to, to Daniels just by the nature, how athletic they are and how, especially across like the defensive line and the linebacker spot. 
So, like, okay, the only way that they got the ball moved on them a little bit by LSU was through the air, and I just I just despise what uh, you get out of the offensive skill at Arizona State. So I do think there's a pretty good chance UCLA is covering that spread. Yeah, and I know UCLA dropped a game that was, I mean, kind of a crazy game that Fresno State played. Uh, Fresno State ends up barely beating UNLV, but that same Fresno State team went to Eugene, Oregon, and only and, and had the ball in the fourth quarter down seven. This is this is a good Fresno State team that's a kind of a gunslinger quarterback. If you watched any of that game, that Jake Hanner kid was like could not run, um, was banged up, and just had a super gritty performance to kind of edge out UCLA at, in the end. I'm not out on UCL as a team, though. I think they can run the ball really well. I think DTR gives that athleticism at that quarterback spot that you like for college. He's been missing some throws, but what they'll said, they're very athletic on defense. They like to be aggressive on defense. And so I, I, I do like to pick. I like it. Um, yeah. And minus three. I also <laughs> like I also like that they they do move the ball fast and – Again, that helps when you're taking spreads. And I think their physical, like they run the ball on basically everybody. And, and the only reason that uh, Fresno Hank hung is is because of Hayner. And, and Hayner can play. So he's a baller. He's a baller. I like him a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I believe it's at home. So uh, not that UCLA sells out for anything, but no, that's well, just an aside. Like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> Like they should have people going to UCLA right? games. They're and good the team. fact that they're sitting there like a third full is yeah is ridiculous and bunch of that student body California man be ashamed of themselves. They actually should be because this team's legit good. I think they can. I mean, we'll see how good Oregon is. Uh, I think they're good. They obviously a very impressive road road win against Ohio State, but uh, I think they have a very good shot to win the Pac-12. Okay, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the game that we're most excited about. We're gonna spend a little bit of time breaking down Michigan money line over over Wisconsin, going on the road to Camp Randall. Wisconsin stinks. I mean, at least their offense stinks. Their defense is very good, but their offense stinks. Graham Mertz cannot throw down horrible, and they do not have that run game that ha- they're historically known for. Their offensive line isn't bad, but it's not as good as it, oh, as it historically has been. And their running back plays is certainly not not as what they're used to. Um, that that Clemson transfer Malusi, I think that's how you say his name. He's no John. Yeah, Taz um, No, he's not. I was not impressed with how he ran the ball. I think Michigan is has a good front seven. That they have, Michigan is a solid defense. Um, I would be very solid if Wisconsin better can, than solid. Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if Wisconsin can run the ball effectively on Michigan. And Graham Mertz, I just – they're not going to win uh, relying on Graham Mertz. Now, what the problem is, okay, can Michigan run the ball on Wisconsin, who's a very, very good defense, very, very good run game. This Notre Dame team that I, – I, we'll get to Notre Dame. I think they stink too. Um, Notre Dame could run the ball on them, and Notre Dame can run the ball on Wisconsin's them. a tough defense to run on because they're huge up front. And they have two – Leo Chanel and uh, Jack Sanborn, like just two very really good. solid – Oh, yeah linebackers so they're like obviously really good on defense especially against the run I think what's going to be the test is like we're going to need to throw the ball and probably throw it downfield which is where Wisconsin's gotten beat a little bit and and yeah that's something Michigan really hasn't proved they can do steadily like they've shown in flashes but yeah consistently can we no I yeah we haven't showed it. Really. And that's how we're going to need to score on them. Uh, and I think another – I wasn't w- wildly impressed by Cade in the second half, Cade McNamara in the second half last week. And granted, I thought he played really well in the first half. So it's it's tough, it's tough to, like, write, write it off or write off what he can do, um, especially with a talented group of wideouts, at least in my mind. Mm-hmm. So – yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I, I'm kind of interested to see if Michigan can kind of get the ball on the perimeter a little bit and, and use their athleticism That's against a, a – the game, in my opinion. Uh, these yeah. wide receivers, you said they're talented. Most of their talent comes in that speed. 
AJ Henning, Roman Wilson. I mean, those guys can motor. You want to get the, even Mike Sanders. They're flyers. They're flyers. Um, we've seen Michigan have a lot of success with those end of rounds uh, and getting Blake Corm kind of outside the tackles. Blake Corm is very fast. I think if you get Blake Corm in space on these linebackers, I think I, I take Blake Corm every day of the week. These linebackers are good, but they're more box linebackers. They're not sideline to sideline linebackers. And so can we can we get outside the tackles? Um, get to the edge, play fast, speed and space. Josh Gaddis has been preaching it. We haven't really seen it on a consistent basis from him, but he's been preaching it. Um, I think that's going to be the key to the game. And I, I, we have the personnel to do it. Um, we just got to go execute. It's going to be a, a, a bumping environment. I think it'll be a little less so because Wisconsin has struggled. This isn't a top 15 team that it normally is. Uh, it's a two loss team. So we'll see. It'll be a little hangover from the no big Notre Dame game in Chicago. Uh, but I, I really like Michigan's chances. This team just seems different. I know I'm a little bit of a homer. Um, it was a rough second half against a Rutgers team that I think is very good. Uh, but I, I like to pick plus 115. Um, I, I think we should be like probably three point favorites, honestly. And that's like not even as a homer play. Like, I just I, I think we are better. I don't think they're like more physical than us this year, frankly. Like I think our offensive line is probably better than theirs, and our defensive line is as good as it's been in probably three or four years. So I think like that old mantra of like obviously we have better athletes, we recruit better in Michigan than uh Wisconsin, but uh in the past like they've been been able to bludgeon us a little bit with like guys of the John Taylor ilk and and I'm with you they just don't have that so it's like what's their identity going to be to beat Michigan when they are inferior athletically and and really not as physically imposing and and, and play the way they have to play to win so yeah. I, I really don't see how we're we're dog for this game and and one last thing for the for the viewers the lines moved from even to two and a half uh, Michigan underdogs. If it gets to three, three and a half, I, I love the pick. Um, if Michigan does lose, it's not going to be by much. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a little bit of a slugfest if Wisconsin wins. And three and a half, uh, I, I really, really like that pick. I don't think they beat us by more than a field goal. So uh, there's that. Uh, we'll kick back to you. Yeah, if they beat us, it's going to be like 10 to 7 or something. <laughs> Yeah, something gross like that. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, my next pick that I I I really like. I think it's at a fun time. I think it's you're a little lacking in the night slate this week. So I think Auburn LSU. Yeah, I really like Auburn in that game. I think that Tank Bigsby and the uh, the freshman got him blanking on his name. Yeah, He's an animal I like too. Him. Good ball player. Uh. They're going to be a problem. LSU, they've shown that they're not a fans of tackling. So, like, you better be ready to tackle to play a tank, tank big speed led offense. And yeah, I just don't, I don't see LSU being able to do it. I think Auburn's going to beat them. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I wouldn't, I, I don't love the game. Um, we saw Auburn really, str I think it was a little bit of a letdown game, a little hangover game from the big on the road Penn State game. Um, they did not look very good last week. Bo Nix got injured, but it looked, it looked like it was more of just like, we're going to bench you. Uh, yeah, you're banged up. You took a hit. We're going to use that to get you out of the game. Um, low key, if he doesn't play, that might not be so bad for Auburn. Um, he's... Go, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm, I have never been a Bo Nix <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I don't. And then, so it'd be that LSU transfer, um, TJ Finley. So that'd be that uh, an interesting storyline. Um, but I don't, I don't love, uh, I don't think you're getting enough value for on the road night game in death Valley. Uh, that that's probably, if not one of it's the best home field advantage um, night games you can have. I don't know if it'll be as ruckus as, as it normally is. Cause LSU just has, hasn't been that good this year. I have not been. Involved. Those people live for that though. I, yeah, I don't, I don't love I don't I don't love either team, so I just I don't know if I like love taking the pick. Um, but I guess if you were gonna take the pick and there's not much uh, going on uh, the late night Saturday night slate, 
I, I would not blame you. I, I just think LSU, like, they can't tackle people. And take Tank Bigsby and the other guy are yep. really good. Like, they might be one of the best duos in the country. I think, I think, I think they, they certainly are out there. I also, like, I, LSU, I, I mean, I don't know. They're basically losing to everybody they play now. So, it's like. LSU stinks. LSU stinks. Their offense is horrific. Uh I mean, not that I – Auburn's got a pretty solid defense. It's not like Penn State could move it on them that well. And I don't, I don't, Hunter, by the way, the name for them. This just smells me – what's that? Arquez Hunter, by the way. I just gave you the name, the freshman RB from Auburn. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that is the – yeah, this is the name. But uh, I, I don't know. LSU, got this just doesn't smell good for LSU. They shouldn't be favorites. And – yeah, I don't know. I don't love Auburn, but it's, this is much more an anti-LSU. And watching them play against UCLA makes me think they will give up 40 if Auburn doesn't throw the ball one time. So yep. they also leave guys wide open, so even Bo Nix will be able to hit them. But, uh, yeah. So LSU just yeah. stinks. Uh, like, that's all I'm saying here. All right, let's let's talk about the Cincy ND game. Uh, talk it. I'm leaning. I'm leaning Cincinnati on the road, going to Notre Dame. I don't lie. To, I'm not giving the pick, but that's just kind of what I'm. I'm leaning. This Notre Dame team, everything that may, has made Notre Dame good, is not there this year. Um, well, not everything, but the the offensive line. The offensive line stinks. They're banged up. They got their they got like third string tackles in there. They were getting abused by Wisconsin. Um, Ajay Sanders is one of the better pass rushers um, in the country for Cincy. This, yeah, Jack Cohen's banged up. Hank Bachmeyer, the second string, is banged up, and so we might be seeing the third string quarterback. Um. I just this Notre Dame team is not that good. They they beat a they okay, so they barely beat Toledo. They barely beat a Florida State team that stinks. They beat Purdue by two scores, but Purdue was hanging in there pretty tough. And then they go on and beat a Wisconsin team that I mean, if that kick return for a touchdown doesn't happen that game, I don't think they win the game. Um and so just this team's not good. And I think yeah. I don't love Cincinnati. I, I like at times, I thought Cincinnati, like, I'm like, oh, Cincinnati's going to win. And then I think about it, it's like, oh, man, watching them against Indiana, not a particularly good defense, frankly. Uh, like, they gave, they gave up some points. The thing is, is I do think that uh, – quarterback's name. Desmond Ritter's like a baller. Him. Desmond Ritter's a baller. He's good, and he played horrific in the first half against Indiana. So that's really – kind of the reason Indiana could hang is there were there were kind of those Tom Allen plays like balls getting tipped fumbles like those things that Indiana seems to just get and make happen were happening in the first half and then I think they they did clean it up a little bit in the second and and kind of took them to the woodshed a little bit Cincinnati did so yeah I I do like the Cincinnati pick honestly I think I think it's about we're like two weeks overdue from Notre Dame getting exposed for being what they are, which is not good. <laughs> not a good team. Like not Jack Cohn's like in fairness, I actually think he's played pretty he's been, good. He's been good. But uh good. again, I still don't I he's think two them. week of an arm. Well, yeah, he does he does carry them and he's disgusting. Again. But they're just they're so they're so bad on on up front and they That's can't run the ball they at can't all. Can't run the ball because of the offensive line stinks. They can't protect and it's just a bad recipe. Their defense is solid, but I don't I don't know if it's good enough. But they don't play. get after the quarterback at all. Really, taking, that's one thing. I'm not taking Cincinnati though because I don't trust. Uh, a it's non- fair to not take it, but like, yeah. If this game wasn't at like kind of in the middle of the Michigan game. I know it starts at 2.30, so maybe the back half. It is one of the better games on this weekend, so it's like I want to be watching. I want action. I mean, dude, if, since, if Cincinnati – I hate the picks. On the road, if Cincinnati wins this game on the road, I mean, they would have a great um, argument to be a, a playoff team. 
I know you hate it. I know you hate it. But if they beat a top 10 team on the road and then run the table and, and beat some, they, they got some good teams on the schedule. Uh, yeah, they'll have two big wins in Indiana. And, and, uh, and they also they also play UCF. Um, they also will play SMU. So, so there's some there's some good teams left on them, but the Indiana team, the Indiana win, I should say, does not look that good anymore because Indiana State. No, they're gonna start killing people, and they're yeah. like they didn't kill Indiana. They obviously. So we'll I'm kind of I kind of agree. It's just I do think like Notre Dame's time is up though. But you're not taking. I'm not, I'm not taking it. We're not giving it out. We just wanted to touch on it. I'm going to, I'm going to finish. No, I just, I just, I want, I want to, but like, I, it's not a, it doesn't seem like a good okay. pick. If you want juice, you just if, take the juice. I think you take Cincinnati. If Cincinnati was two point dogs, like, I'd kind of be, I'd really like that pick. Wait, Are they not? Two point dogs? Uh, they're two point favorites. Fine. I mean, let me look. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, let's look. I thought they were dogs. I thought they were favorites, but I could be wrong. Maybe right. Um, yeah. For sure, because I'm not. I wasn't like it wasn't one of the picks. Like they're I favorites. Kinda... They're two point favorites. Yeah, minus one thirty money line. Blah. See if they if they're two point dogs, I'm, I'm all wrong. over. Them, yeah, I don't know. Frankly. Um. All right. Oh, you're, you're we have great. to go. We have to go fast. We got. I'm thinking we might just want to do a separate show on the Arkansas UGA um, and Bama. Yeah. I say let's do that. There's just too much. There's too much to get into. I was trying to get in the show. Uh, Bama UCLA or Bama Ole Miss deserves its own. That's a fast and and UJ Arkansas. It's also a very good game. So um, let's finish. I actually don't. I don't see that game being good. I think UJ is going to murder them. But but it's a top. I mean, it's a top. top, We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about off camera. Texas minus five, I like. TCU can't stop a nosebleed. Um, they might put up points, but I think Texas is also going to put up <laughs> Casey Thompson. Casey, Th- and I hate betting Texas. That's the next factor, but that's the next factor that like Casey Thompson's playing now. I will say. I always get, I don't, I feel like I've never won a bet when I bet on Texas. Um, so they always rip your heart out for sure. This Arkansas team turns out to be like a, a decent football team. Uh, they beat Texas a and in a neutral site. Uh, it was in Texas, actually. Um, not in College Station. Yeah, but that was in the stadium. Um, and then Texas. That's Jerry's off, world. Texas is coming off beating uh, Rice by 58-0 and then beating Texas Tech 35-70. to They're going to put up – I mean, if they're putting 35 on – they'll put up 60 on, on TCU. Um, TCU is a good team, and it's, it's in TCU, but – and they gave up 42 to SMU. They gave up 32 to Cal. Like, this team is, is not that good. Zach Evans has been a problem. Oh, yeah, that's too many to Cal. That's gross. Um, Cal's bad. But I just – I don't – I think this Texas team's a little bit better. I think we kind of panicked, but they they brought in Casey Thompson. I think he's the best. I thought they should have went with him from the, from the jump. Same. Um, they they go with him now, and he's looking like he's he's – taken over the show so it's actually ridiculous that casey thompson wasn't playing he was awesome in the ball game and then they go with that other guy who's not that good so i don't i don't hate it i don't love it um it wouldn't have been one of mine that would have been a, a pick just to stay away from uh, yeah texas texas they're not a they're not good tacklers like zach evans is an animal so there's like some issues I I just and I Texas man. If you're in a running back, huh. you're in that game because you got two of the best running backs in the country. Zach Evans is, a, is the name that people need to start talking about. Um, he's good. He's a good ball. Player. Yeah, no, I just heard people start hyping him this week. It is like he's not that I was really wildly familiar with him, but he's been that dude. Uh, and okay, so my last pick, and this again is like I feel like I'm just getting into like picking bad teams, but. South Carolina minus six and a half. Troy's coming to South Carolina. Troy's not good. I people like Troy to begin the year, and I don't. I, I wasn't like I didn't know enough about them to be like, okay, let's. They're not good, but like let's pull up their schedule. Let's see what they've done because it's not good. Um, they played Southern U and SCS team that has not been impressive. We watched a little bit of them in the in the spring during the SCS game. Um, not impressive. They won. Well, they won fifty-five to three. Okay. They Liberty comes to Troy. 
Liberty beats him 21 to 13, but Troy uh, scores a touchdown in garbage time, eight seconds left, uh, fourth and 20. They score. So it, that really was not as close as, as people think. Um, and then and Liberty, frankly, is not as good as yeah, people exactly. like said. Like, not they're, as they're a you decent team, but they're you were about it. Um, they're, they're I not, thought they were going to be top 25 team. They're not close to that. So it's like you know that Syracuse looked pretty bad. And, and I don't know what Hugh Freeze was doing towards the end of that game either. Um, he lost his mind. That, like, even, oh, that, even crazy. being close against Liberty seems to be less impressive. They only scored 21 points against the Southern Miss team that's really weak. And then they lose to the University of Louisiana Monroe, who stinks. I mean, they are not – they're one of the worst FCS teams or FBS teams in the country. Um, I just – I don't get this line. I get South Carolina's bad, but they're getting back their actual scholarship quarterback. The GA is not going to start anymore. They kept it within six to Kentucky, and Kentucky's not a bad football team. Uh, they're four and zero. They're oh, Kentucky's good. good. Um, and they they South Carolina is loaded on defense. I mean, they got they got studs all all over the board. Um, I really really like Nick Muse at tight end, and I really like Josh Van at that wide receiver position. Um, for South Carolina, so I actually I mean I don't like South Carolina as a team because they haven't haven't put it all together, but. I think they're going to cover seven against uh, the floor. They, they were my lock of the week, week two. They, they, they ended up covering for the boys. Um, I think they'll cover again today. Um, it would have been an easy cover over ECU too, if they didn't like make oh, yeah. just wild mistakes, like the weird, weirdest yeah. mistakes are really GA fumbling looked, on the goal line. Cool. That, that GA looked. Uh, uh, yeah. It's tough to play with a guy who's not really retired. And, silly. Yeah. And Kevin Harris looked bad, but so I, I that's my last pick that I didn't like. Um, we're gonna get into the Arkansas, Georgia, and the Bama Ole Miss game. The over under with the Alabama Ole Miss game is eight or eighty right now, which is just disgusting. Too low, <laughs> dude. It honestly might be like Vegas is normally pretty right on that. You cashed the Ole Miss under bet. And it was about the most. Didn't they, didn't they put a hundred? Didn't they go over a hundred last year? Like way over. Like they were both in the fifties. Okay. If I don't, let's look it up. Um, it was way. It was way up there. I remember Nick Saban saying that Lane Kiffin had all his defensive yeah, plays. Yeah, it was. It, was the whole stupid. it went to hundred and eleven. If my math is right, that is disgusting. Matt Crowell threw for three sixty. Yeah, and Mac Jones threw for four hundred. Najee Harris ran for two hundred yards and five touchdowns. That's Granted, cool. Ole Miss actually plays a little bit. I think their defense is much improved. So it's like both defense. I think both talking. defenses are much improved. Um, both these defenses look good. Yeah. All right, we'll get into that game. But later. their offense is both looking we'll into that game later. I can't. All right, we need. We need to do a video. This game's gonna be very fun to watch. I want to talk about it right now. So yeah. I can't. Okay, that'll be it for us. Uh, we got some good picks. We'll tweet it out. Um, we're gonna put. If you want to fast forward to your uh, teams in the and the. Uh, comments we set that up for you guys uh hope you enjoy your saturday let's get back to winning some money we've had a good college football season so far it took a little hit last week we're getting back on that train this week let's get this money we'll talk to y'all later for that old miss bama game peace